Welcome back, Shalligators, and welcome back to our Shalentine's Day coverage. Eee! I mean, right? I don't know about you. Well, I do because you've clicked on this video. You're probably single at Valentine's Day. Guess who else is? Me! Ah! <laughs> Fuck, dude, right? Listen, I'm a very happy single chick. I like my alone time, I like my space. I'm usually very happy single, but it's hard to be single when you don't even have like a crush, you know, like someone that you're even like talking to on Valentine's Day, but don't worry. I've been single for most of my Valentine's days and you might be too, or maybe you're fresh out of a relationship or you've had a really long-term relationship and this is kind of the first one where you're like, oh fuck, this is what it's like on the other side. Listen, I'm going to tell you what I tell myself to be okay being single on Valentine's Day or really any time of the year and how we can get comfortable, number one, not caring about Valentine's Day, just like put it out of our mind in terms of something that's stressing us out. And again, how to really be happy, not just okay, oh, I'm not going to kill myself, but actually happy being single. We're going to break it all down, but before we do, if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, you're going through a little love thing, uh, head on over to my website, shallonlester.com, and click submit a question. If you want a video and to chat with me that way, or a Galentine's wish for a friend, or to be rate a fuck boy, whatever, <laughs> head over to cameo.com if you live in the U.S., and if you're outside the U.S., head over to memo.me, and I can get you a little custom video. It's really fun. I talk a bunch, more than I should. Also, Valentine's Day is about love, and that just doesn't mean love for dudes and all of their body parts. It means love for one another. Oh, goodbye, rainbow pillow that cowboy ripped open. So yeah, go ahead and, and fund. Click the link below to help donate for those. Yeah, I bought this, and my little, my little boy was like, nope, goodbye. He, he was not like breastfed long enough, so he likes anything like squishy and breasty. Mm -hmm. Okay, just, okay. All right, being single on Valentine's Day. First of all, first of all, we can acknowledge that it isn't, I don't think, anyone's ideal scenario to be single and alone on any holiday, right? Like holidays, and maybe this is commercialization or whatever, they're group activities. Who wants to be completely alone on Christmas or 4th of July or like even Easter? You know what I mean? So first, stop telling yourself that you shouldn't feel this way. It's how we've been conditioned and especially, hello, a holiday about love. You feel a little bit on the outside when you're walking through Target and you see that two, those two red rows, just red Valentine's Day cards. You're like, oh, I should get a card for Oh, or you in like the kid island has the, the little Valentines for class. You're like, oh, I should get some. I'm not in third grade anymore. Okay. Oh, the lingerie. I should pick up. I should pick up fucking nothing. I made the mistake of wandering into Victoria's Secret the other day at the mall. I'm like looking at lingerie and I went down, boo, I went down a hole. Cause I'm like, I don't have anyone to wear this for. Like not even a booty call, like not even a crush, no one to send a nude to. I am like single as it gets. But you know what? Listen, listen. The first step in being okay with being single is to acknowledge that the grass is not always greener. What was our previous video just about? What was it just about? How to manage expectations on Valentine's Day if you're in a relationship? Because look, and I said in that video, we think we're talking, oh, being single is the worst thing. No. Pointing you when you're single. You know, like you're just maybe overall bummed that you don't have someone, but you don't wake up on Valentine's Day thinking you're going to get breakfast in bed and a limo ride and a massage and it doesn't happen. You know that that's not happening. So you're already managing expectations. It's awful when you don't have something and it's measurably worse when you think you have it and it doesn't work out, right? When you think, oh, cause I have a boyfriend, I'm gonna have this super romantic Valentine's Day and he fucking blows it. Like when I think about my worst Valentine's days, it's not the ones where I was single. I honestly don't even remember them. It's like, okay, whatever. It's, <laughs> I hoped he was going to do X, Y, and Z, but turns out he forgot, or I I've told you this, I got dumped on two different Valentine's Day in a row by two different dudes. And I'm almost positive I was pregnant on one of them. I do, I think I was pregnant. Cause I got like, I think I talked about this in the other video. It's like, I got my period, but it was like turned up a few notches. Sorry, that's TMI. But like, I'm like, this isn't normal. Something, I think I had a miscarriage. 
piece of shit, Jack Finn. Anyway, what I'm saying is there's worse things than to be single, okay? And I know from some bad Valentine's days. So again, we have to acknowledge that we as single chickadees are looking at the coupled up people as living this fairy tale romance. They're not. They're literally not. I truly, when I think of like the best Valentine's days I've ever had, I really can't think of one. I mean, I can't. I can think of wonderful romantic times with a, with a guy or like wonderful dates. But even like my great one with, with my ex, and I talked about this in the previous video, like we went to a strip club. I fucking love strippers. But he didn't like make reservations for dinner. And it was, I don't know, 10 degrees outside. And I was in heels. We were walking around trying to find some place that was open. Like that was not fantastic. So stop telling yourself that the girls who have boyfriends are living out this fantasy. They're not. They're in this constant state of like, well, is he gonna do this? Is he gonna do that? Is my present okay? Is my present too much? Is it not enough? Is my lingerie okay? Like, there's a whole separate set of pressures. We talk a lot about being single versus having a boyfriend. Using the same analogy we would, I'm sorry, using the same comparison we would if we were talking about not having a job and then getting a job. When you're unemployed, yeah, there's a lot of real stressors. There's a lot of real reasons why it sucks not having a job. But we also acknowledge that if you get hired someplace, it's the end of, yes, many stressors, but it's the beginning of many new ones. Okay, you're not just bored and idle all the time, but now you can't just meet your friends whenever for lunch. Okay, you're not stressing about money as much, but you're dealing with your fucking boss and these new coworkers. We acknowledge that no side is perfect and that each situation has its upsides, but has its major downsides too. But for some reason with love, we don't want to think that way. We think being single, we are the hunchback of Notre Dame just slithering around the world, banging at the moon. And if you're in a relationship or if you have a man that loves you or you love him or whatever, everything's fine. Has that ever been the case? I mean, I've dated a lot of guys. I'm sure you guys have. Yeah, even when we've been in love, there's still been challenges. I'm not getting enough sleep. I haven't seen my friends. My laundry's piling up. Like there's a hot guy at the pool. I'm not allowed to talk to him. So stop fictionalizing the realities of being in a relationship because that's gonna dial down this mania because where your sadness comes from right now is comparison. It's comparison. On March 29th, are you waking up that day being like, I'm single today. Oh fucking single I'm single today and I'm a nightmare no you're only doing that on February 14th because society has told you that's what you're supposed to do like you might be thinking on March 29th oh, I wish I had a boyfriend but it's not like rah this neon sign that's blaring in your face all the time like it is on St. Valentine's Day so stop with the comparison how do we do that because it's always easy to say just don't compare yourself oh okay what am I gonna like not watch TV, log out of my Instagram, not talk to any of my friends, like outside of becoming a complete hermit, how do we stop the comparison? Well, number one, realism. Comparison is rooted in fantasy, right? Oh my God, look at her body, she's just so perfect. Well, we don't see that her alarm goes off at 5 a.m. every day to do CrossFit, okay? Uh, she's just dripping in Chanel. We also don't see she's in $78,000 worth of credit card debt. We are looking at someone's social mask their persona, what they present, their storefront, if you will, and comparing that to our reality. That's not fair. And look, I do this shit for a living. I'm an influencer. It is my job to curate a storefront. But I also think it's my job to shoot you guys straight. Like being single is great a lot of times. A lot of times it fucking sucks and it sucks on Valentine's Day. You wish there was just, it's the day, you know what it is? It's like, it's the day where you can just be as girly as you want and just be like, I'm thinking about boys all day long. I'm thinking about love and I don't think about anything else. And it sucks and it's ironic because society tells us on one hand that our value is rooted in who wants to fuck us, right? That's the message we overwhelmingly get. But society also tells us that, ooh, we gotta be a boss babe and a bad bitch and I'm uh, like, I don't even care about boys. I'm a cool girl, right? How the hell do these two things intersect? Well, on Valentine's Day, they don't have to. You can just be like the lovey-dovey. You can be the little Cupid queen. And there's something kind of relaxing about that where we can just be like, yeah, I'm thinking about boys. 
I'm thinking about boys every goddamn day, but today's the only day I'm allowed to admit it. It's the only day I'm allowed to text people, I love you, I love you. It's tough. It's tricky, okay? What is this? Is this a price tag? Oh, that's nice. That's tacky. Like I said, <laughs> I curate a storefront. I curate this persona of perfection, don't I? Am I not so good at it? Now I want to talk about truly the big message here in this video, okay? No one treats me as good as I treat myself. No one. A guy asked me the other day, how come you don't have a boyfriend? And before I could stop myself, you know sometimes you say something and only after you've said it, you realize how true it is? I was like, I can't find a man who treats me as good as I treat myself. And he's like, I've never heard a woman say that. I was like, I've never met a woman who treats herself the way that I do. <laughs> me, I don't. My life is centered around pleasing myself. I don't have kids, I don't have a husband. You know, I am, I have a healthy set of boundaries to my family. You know, I don't live with my mom. I'm not like so umbilically tied to her anymore. I've worked on separating and creating my own life. My life is oriented around my own personal happiness. I do what makes me happy. And I make the sacrifices in order to do that. Whether that's, um, okay, I'm gonna work a little harder. I'm gonna work an extra day a week so that I can have a spa day. Or I'm not gonna have kids or settle down so that I can snowbird and miss the winter and I can go to St. Bart's for two weeks if I really want to. Okay. My life focuses on me. My life is lived for myself. So yeah, as I've gotten older, I have learned how to manage comparison. And I have, I know enough about people at this point and like what goes on behind the curtain. I mean, just working in celebrity journalism, I mean, there is no greater example of facade versus reality. There's no wider divide between those two things. People who look so, so, so perfect are batshit fucking crazy, or they're miserable, or they're addicted to Adderall, or they're actually broke, or they're actually gay, and this is their fake girlfriend, you know? So when I could see that in such extreme ways, I could now look at someone on Instagram and be like, okay, not that everyone who's posting things, and not that everyone's life is completely baloney, I don't mean that at all, but you learn to take everything with a grain of salt, you know? You learn to say, all right, what I'm seeing here, what I'm hearing, is the highlight reel. This is the commercial. Social media is a commercial for our lives. What, you ever watch a commercial? They're like, nah, this car's gonna blow up. This is actually a shitty car. No, it's always the highlight reel. And so when we can acknowledge that, okay, these images, these stories, these comparisons, they don't quite land in the same detrimental way. You can brush them off and you can compartmentalize them a little easier. But the number one thing that I do to be happy single and to not really care if Valentine's Day is here or if it's not, I treat myself the way I want a man to treat me. I treat myself the way I want a man to treat me. I am my own boyfriend. What were we just saying? Pain is not, I don't have a boyfriend. Pain is I have a boyfriend, I expect him to make reservations, I expect him to get me a nice gift, and he hasn't. So, <laughs> my needs aren't being met, and I'm trapped here in this relationship, or I feel like I am, and I can't even go get those needs met someplace else, or I can't meet those needs myself because I just spent Valentine's Day with him. If I was single, I would book my own massage. I would get my girlfriends together and we would have our own dinner at Nobu. We would do a present exchange. They would know exactly what I wanted or I would just buy it for myself. But I can't do that. I'm stuck with this person who isn't giving me what I need. What is that? Cognitive dissonance. What is happening does not match what I want. Bah! This is a source of all the misery in our minds, all the tension. It is a source of like, diabetes, weight gain, heart disease, because it's stress, and stress creates all that in the body. Now you've been thinking, having a boyfriend is the absence of stress. Being single on Valentine's Day, that's stressful. It doesn't seem like it to me. Not true, not every guy out there is a complete fucking disappointment. But like I also said, when I think back about my own you know, history, I'm hard pressed to find one or two that haven't been. In some way, shape, or form. Maybe that means my standards are unrealistic. Or maybe it means that on some level, 
I have always known that I am my own best friend. I am my own best sugar daddy. That I know what I need better than anybody else. This summer, my friend Sarah and I, we were like driving around Bozeman, like just being assholes. And we were, you know, bitching about guys. It was just what every girl, you know, what else do we talk about when we're with our friends, right? Like, hmm, taxation law. <laughs> And we jokingly were like, we need to find a guy who treats us as well as we treat each other. Like as well as we treat ourselves. And we're like, <laughs> and we both got really quiet. And we're like, we looked at each other and we're like, that's what it is though, isn't it? We, when we, cause we couldn't pinpoint why these guys were like unsatisfying, right? Guys we would date. It's like, well, I'm, I don't know. It's like he texts me and we go out. It's, it's fine, I'm just not like, I don't feel those things. Like I don't feel that juice, I'm not in love. And it's because the bar is so goddamn high. Do you ever say something and it's only after you say it that you realize like how true it is? I, just the other day here in Scottsdale, I had this guy who was like all up in my pieces. And he's like, how come you don't have a boyfriend? And before I could like really think about it, I was like, I can't find a guy who treats me as well as I treat myself. And he's like, I've never heard that before. I'm like, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. And he's like, I hear girls say, I can't find a guy who treats me like as well as my dad treated me or as well as my ex treated me or as well as I want to be treated. He's like, I've never heard someone say it like present tense as well as I currently treat myself. And I'm like, I, I'm my, I'm daddy. I'm boyfriend, I'm best friend. I am all these things to myself. What does this mean? What am I trying to say? Meet your own needs. I did a video, maybe it was even last Valentine's Day, where I touched on the subject of birthdays. And I'm like, you know, my whole life changed when I just started buying my own birthday cake because I have a real specific idea of what a birthday cake should be. White cake, pink frosting, some sprinkles, that's a fucking birthday cake. I love Nutella. Don't give me a Nutella cake for my birthday. I love banana cake. That's not a birthday cake. And I had this idea in my mind. I had that standard that I needed met. I wasn't communicating it to other people because you don't want to be a dick. It's like, are you buying me my cake? Oh, you're buying me my perfect cake? Like, be a little bit <laughs> magnanimous and, and like grateful, right? But I was always disappointed. And one year I was like, <sighs> I want what I want. I want it how I want it. I am going to take the reins on this. I'm going to buy my own birthday cake. No disappointment. Would we like someone to have it there for us? Yes. Would we like someone to be a mind reader and clean up, you know, and do all these things for us? Of course. But wait a minute. Would we? Let's break this down. If you have needs, right? Emotional needs, experiential needs, even sexual needs and you are capable of meeting them yourself, but put a pin in that, we're gonna come back to that. Why would you purposely offload those responsibilities to someone who might disappoint you? Why would you do that? Why would you risk that? Why would you risk not getting your needs met by tasking them out to somebody else? I'm a micromanager. It's a byproduct of running your own business when you are the business. Like it is very hard for me to offload tasks to other people because I don't think they're gonna do them the way that they need to be done. And I've just kind of accepted that. And so I offload things where it doesn't really matter how they happen. Cleaning my house, washing my dog, detailing my car. I'm not doing that shit myself. I am editing my own videos. I am doing my own music and thumbnails, right? I answer all the questions myself. I do my own social media because I need to do those the way they need to be done. And I look at my emotional life and I realize I do the same thing. Like, I am going to treat myself the way I know that I need to be treated. I will not risk not getting my needs met by offloading them to a guy. Or honestly, even to my friends. I will meet as many of my own needs as I possibly can before I expect someone else to. I'm gonna buy that birthday cake. But okay, look, hey, now I've realized I buy the birthday cake I'm satisfied, I feel good. So whatever else my friends plan for my birthday, it's all good, it's all love. That's great because I've got that thing, that weird central need of the pink cake met. We've checked that box, 
Everything else is gravy. Everything else is like variable. Huh. Okay. How does this relate to guys? On Valentine's Day, I like a spa day. Like I just like spas, you know? Spa days are kind of expensive. Guys don't really love spas, you know? A lot of dudes like don't want to be touched. I mean, some don't want to be touched too much. You know what I mean? It's just not really like their thing. It's not, we're not even gonna be in the same room anyway. So I'm like, look, for me, my love language is like getting a massage. <laughs> like it's not, but I book my own massage. Whether I have a boyfriend or not, I'm taking myself to get a Valentine's Day massage the day before, whatever it is. That works for me. I'm getting myself a beautiful bouquet of flowers, the kind of flowers I like. Not this bodega ass flower, this baby's breast shit. I like tulips, I like peonies, this is my jam. I'm going to make sure those needs are met. So that if my boyfriend sends me bodega flowers and roses, okay. I might not love it, but I'm not like, these were the only flowers I was going to get and now you fucked it. You fucked it and bungled it. I don't feel that way because I met my own needs. How does this, how does this tie into being single? Again, if you have the capability to meet your own needs and you think it's better to offload those to someone else, uh-uh-uh-uh-uh, <laughs> no, 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 that's risky, that's risk. Here, let me throw away all the food in my house and hope a private chef comes by to cook for me. And if he doesn't, I'm gonna starve. That's what you're doing to yourself emotionally. That's what you're saying by saying, if I don't have a boyfriend, my Valentine's Day is a bag of shit. Now, I know what you might be saying. Well, <laughs> I actually don't have the means to meet my own needs. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. Now we got something. Now we're digging in, right? Because for the longest time, this is how I felt too. I need a guy to give me these experiences. I can't afford a spa day. I can't afford to take myself to Nobu. I can't afford to send myself flowers to the office. This is where we need to start. This is where we need to start. Because when we rely on other people to get our needs met, what are we? What are we? We're a cold-blooded animal. I don't know what animal that was supposed to be, but something where it's tongue darts in and out. Mammals don't do that shit. They don't. They don't do that shit. Unless it's a dog with peanut butter on the roof of his mouth. When we rely on other people, whether it's our parents, our friends, the internet, the likes, the boyfriend, again, we put our identity and our needs and our future and our happiness in the hands of someone else. What the fuck is more cold-blooded than that? And when you think of it that way, what is more emotionally dangerous and risky? So if you want these grand experiences Bitch, bitch, this is where we start. This is where we start. New Year's Eve might not have been the wake up call for like what we need to change. Maybe Valentine's Day is. Maybe Valentine's Day is when we're like, the things that I want a guy to give me, I need to be hustling for myself. We talk about this in terms of hurt lockers. And if you're new here, a hurt locker is the name I give to those people we like imprint on when we're like not at a great point in our lives. Basically the ex we cannot get over, the guy we cannot forget. And very often it's someone we didn't even really date. Like it's not, our hurt lockers aren't like the boyfriend of three years, right? And my hurt lockers have always been very successful, but very humble and very hardworking guys. And the reason I was always drawn to them is because I didn't feel like I had those qualities. I was, at the time, not hardworking. Certainly, I have never been humble. I was not particularly successful, not compared to them. And so I, it's like I was trying to get this contact high by being with them, like their successes would rub off on me by osmosis. And one was an athlete. I mean, actually, they've all been athletes. And it's like, you get a lot of juice being a wag, wives and girlfriends. Like, you're famous because you're dating him. Like, and whether that's famous at Princeton, whether that's famous in the NHL, whatever, fame is fame. Notoriety is notoriety. But I was relying on that to like bolster me until one day I realized it's not that I want to date these guys, it's that I want to be them. And so instead of just obsessing about them in this endless loop for years and years and years, which I would have, I'm like, okay. How can I be more like James? How can I be more like the other one? Like, how can I be more like them? How can I copy and paste what they're doing into my own life? These men were not destinations, they were a map. Where am I supposed to go? So when you're thinking about Valentine's Day, I wish I had this, I wish I had that. 
That's not a destination. That's a map. Where is it trying to take you? I just wish I had someone who was like listening to me and like, okay, maybe you need to shore up your friendships. If you don't feel like you're being listened to and there's anyone of quality in your life, who the fuck says it's got to have a dick attached to it? Get out there and make some girlfriends. Get closer with your sister. Call up your cousins. Have a little family time. I mean, I just really want like something like pampering and luxurious. Okay, do you work at Cinnabon at the fucking airport? And listen, we have talked about Cinnabon at the airport. It's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. It's not an actual place. It's like, are you giving in to mediocrity? You know, and I've talked like when I was a waitress at Houston's in New York, I had to get out of there because I would I would be around the lifers. You know, the ones who it's like, oh, you're here, you're you're a lifer. You say you're going to be on Broadway. You're not going to do shit. Like you're here, you're a career server. And that's fine for some people. It was not fine for me. And so I didn't want to be around that energy. So are you working as hard as you can? Do you need to go back to school and get that GED? Do you need to come home and stop drinking and start working on your side project or whatever it is or your main project? Do you need to put in a little more grit at work and hustle and take on more projects and see if you can get that promotion? Do you need to just... Be bolder and braver. Like maybe it's not luxury you're yearning for. Maybe it's just new experiences. Do you need to shake off this fucking pandemic? Be like, I've wasted enough of my life on this bullshit. We're getting back out there. What is it? Sit with it and let your psyche speak to you. Because she is. She's speaking to you. But you're acting like she's speaking in a foreign language and you can't understand her. Oh, I don't know. She's just saying boyfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend. She's not fucking saying that. She's not saying boyfriend. She's saying something else. When I think about being sad about being single, because, you know, (sighs) yeah, I'm not, it's not, it's not ideal. We all want to be in love. Who doesn't want to be in love? Who doesn't want to be in that crazy, stupid love? Why I've been upset this Valentine's Day and like upset is a very relative term because it's like minor because I am so good on my own. I'm upset about my ex. Like I miss him a lot. I fell completely in love with this guy this summer. We lived in two different states. It did not work. And I was willing to make it work and he was not. And that's what are you going to do? You know, if you're looking for entrances and they're looking for exits, that's pretty much the writing on the wall. And it kills me like it's. mm, But when I think about why I'm sad and why I miss him. I miss those feelings. I felt super alive when I was with him and I felt very heard and understood and seen. And that's maybe that's why that was the first example that popped into my mind just a few minutes ago. Like he was a completely different kind of person that I've been meeting in Montana. Guys who are like, what do you do? And they're just They're just more salt of the earth, like blue collar dudes. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's not who I am. And it's hard to find a fit. Like my ex and I would talk about philosophy and like aerospace engineering and history. And like, I felt like I could be as smart as I am. I didn't have to dial anything down. I could be as funny as I am. I could be as successful as I am. And that is a very rare thing for me. Not like, oh, I'm this fucking genius. But where I live, you can be one. You can be hot, you can be successful, you can be smart. Oh, you wanna be all three? <laughs> it's tough, we know this, we, we know this, girls, because we're all like this, all of you guys are exactly the same way. This appealing slash repellent trifecta of hot, smart, successful, we get it. And so when I think about him, and I think about, okay, if he's not a destination, he's a map, what is this map? Okay, Valentine's Day is not a destination, it's a map. Where's it pointing? I need people, I need guys who let me unfurl myself. And it's, here's the key word there. Let? No, 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 no. I need to stop dialing myself down. I need to stop pretending I don't do what I do for a living. You know that for a while I was telling guys I worked at Starbucks? Get depressing. Not that there's anything wrong with working at Starbucks, but I don't work there. And they're like, oh, what goes into this? I'm like, I don't know, dude, coffee? Fuck, leave me alone. Because I don't want to scare them away. But now, and I, I've known this, I've known this, and I've told you guys this advice, but when you're living it, you, it's easy to get off that path. Now it's like, good, run. You're afraid? You should be. I am your worst fucking nightmare because I don't need you. I want you, but I am so good on my own. And it took my ex and it took that breakup and it took the saddest about Valentine's Day to reaffirm that, to remind myself of that. 
I'm never going to find a guy who accepts me as I am if I don't present who I actually am. If I'm always dialing it down and tiptoeing around their ego, I wonder why I get guys with fragile egos. I mean, you what you permit, you promote. So, okay. This is reaffirming to me. Now I'm not so upset about Valentine's Day. Now I'm not like, I'm alone. No, no. I'm doing research. I'm doing emotional research. Now I'm like, "Mm, okay, I'm figuring out what these messages in my mind, what this sadness is actually trying to tell me. So what is yours trying to tell you? And as you figure that out, I want you to simultaneously work on being your own boyfriend. Give yourself your perfect Valentine's Day. And look, we go back to managing expectations, like in that past video. It's like, well, my perfect Valentine's Day was like a private helicopter to a yacht and then John Mayer's playing. Okay, okay, that might not happen this February 14th, but can you get a dropper of that? I wanna do something luxurious for myself. Maybe luxury is just defined as, I'm gonna do whatever I want today. I'm gonna get up when I want, I'm gonna eat what I want, I'm gonna go sit in the park for two hours, I'm gonna take myself to the movies. Come up with ways to get that indulgent feeling if that's at the root of what you want for yourself because when you start to date yourself and give yourself everything that you want first of all your relationships vastly improve vastly improve it was just my birthday and you know people were like messaging me like i hope you're treating yourself today and like doing whatever you want and like it's your special day and i'm like every day is my special day i mean i do whatever i want Every day. Yeah, of course I work. I do the laundry. You know, I do those things. But like, I treat myself well all the time. So my birthday isn't this like one shot to be the princess. You know, you see brides who are like that. I'm sorry. I keep, I feel like I keep like, like my teeth keep hitting and I keep hitting my tooth and it's like making my jaw. So I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. You see brides who are like that, like this bridezilla. It's my special day. It's my special day. Bitch, I got a lot of special days. I got my makeup done a lot. I got my hair blown out. I wear nice dresses. Like, yeah, my wedding was great and it was the most special, but it wasn't. The differential between my wedding day and other days is not as wide as it is for other people because I have crafted a life being aware of my needs for specialness and giving it to myself. It doesn't happen overnight. I moved to New York so I could be in the center of things and feel special. I climbed the ladder in celebrity journalism so I was like an it girl in a bold face name because I acknowledged I need to feel special. I need to be a bit of a princess. You're never going to get what you can't acknowledge. There's nothing wrong with whatever you want, but it's never going to happen if you're not looking it in the face, even if it's douchey, even if it's embarrassing, even if it's impossible. Impossible is fucking nothing. Impossible is nothing. Everything I've achieved in my life has been impossible. Everything. Oh, you think that's going to happen? I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't know why I do, but I do. Bada boom, bada bing. Here they are. So when I could give myself all this specialness, on my birthday when my friends planned something, I was super chilled. I was like, we can go here. We can go to Chili's. We can go to Top Golf. I don't care. I just want to see you guys because this isn't my only shot. Same on Valentine's Day. When you're treating yourself the way you want to be treated, listening to yourself, being good to yourself, resting when you need to rest, being proud of yourself, patting yourself on the back, taking time to be grateful and congratulatory. Then Valentine's Day with a boyfriend or without, okay, it's just another day. Now look, now look, I should have said this up front. Just because I can give myself a spa day and the this and the that and all these wonderful luxurious things, I can buy my own YSL, I can do whatever does not mean I will tolerate a man who cannot do those things. You're going to match my energy, right? Me being my own boyfriend is not an excuse for a guy to not be my boyfriend. He should be able to do these things, but I should be able to do them too. I think we all know girls, and we might be them, who demand an A-plus guy, and they're a C-minus-ass bitch, right? We see this, like, I'm a boss and I'm a diva. Are you, Cindy? Are you? Like, we see girls, and again, like, we might be, we've all been these people where we're demanding what we are not giving. 
So if we're not being our best or striving to be our best, however we define that, why would we be so entitled to think the universe owes us someone better? I mean, come on. Water seeks its same level. And I know, yeah, okay, right, you have these fat guys with these young hot chicks. This is not what we're talking about. I'm talking about true, real love. If you're not a thoughtful person, why should you have a thoughtful guy? If you're not a fit, nutritious, like health conscious person, you want to do to as a fitness model? Why? Why do you think you deserve that? Are you matching someone's energy? That's where we need to start. And I had to get real clear with myself. I don't want to date crazy guys. Really? Because Shallon, you were the crazy girl. Hmm. So please don't think that when I say be your own boyfriend, it means you should date a deadbeat and he shouldn't have to do anything. Absolutely not. And ironically, when you are treating yourself the way you should be treated, a deadbeat is like inconceivable. Inconceivable. Because it's unfamiliar. When we have really great friends who listen to us and love us and value us for who we are, we have a guy who's like, oh, you've had threesomes? I don't like that. I had an ex-boyfriend say that to me. I said, who the fuck asked you? He said, don't you ever comment on my history. It does not belong to you. It belongs to me. Because I'm used to people around me who aren't judgmental, who accept me for who I am, who actually love my past experiences because they know it's created the person they see in front of them. And they like that person. But it all starts with us being our own boyfriend. So Valentine's Day, again, not a destination, a map. Where should it take you? Let Valentine's Day be our great reset, our big 2022 start over button. What do we want to do for ourselves? Where do we want to be a year from now? I've asked myself that question Valentine's days ago, and now I'm happy to say I'm in a place where I want a boyfriend, but I don't need a boyfriend. You know, it's okay. I'm good on my own. When it comes and when it's right, I'll know it because everything else in my life is oriented around treating me the way I deserve to be treated. So only a man who is on par with that, who is matching that energy, who is the complement, not the completion, will earn a spot. And I don't have to share my camera. I'll see you later, babies.